Welcome to 44 Tackle, boys. What's going on, dude? We're, we're even greeted as we walk in. Ooh, gambler stuff. <laughs> there he is. So I walked in and they made me sign a hat. 44 tackle hat. And I can't write very well, so. We are at Awesome 44 Tackle. You guys have seen a tackle shop walkthrough of this place. My buddy Chris back there owns it. And we're going to talk to him in a minute. But here's what's actually happening. I don't know if I'm going to shoot video. Every once in a while, I actually go fishing for fun. Like, and I don't shoot video on that. And I'm going to be going to the Harris chain. Is that Chris back there? There he is. <laughs> I'm gonna be going to the Harris chain and uh, try to do a little bit of offshore fishing, maybe with my buddy Frank a little bit too. Don't know if there's gonna be any video, but what we're gonna do, I'll, I'll walk you guys through the shop because the shop is, take a look around. It is gigantic. And there's actually some hidden rooms back there where they do, is it, Chris, is that a Facebook Live? So we do a Facebook Live, we do a YouTube Live, and we do it on Instagram Live as well. It's every Thursday, right? Every, well, we just, we're starting on Thursdays this week, but we were doing it on Fridays, uh, but 5.30 on Thursday. So we're going to walk through, and I'm going to show you the whole shop, but I'm also going to go shopping, kind of as I do, because here's the difference between a lot of lakes that I fish in Central Florida offshore and in the Harris Chain. Harris Chain is that much shallower. So whereas on my lakes, I'd be fishing, say, 15 to 25, 15 to 28, sometimes even 30. On Harris, I'm gonna be in like 10 to 12, eight to 14. So I don't have a lot of baits that really kind of cater to that, that depth column, that depth range. So if we do find some brush piles, if we do fish some offshore fish, I need some lures to go ahead and catch them. So the first thing that I'm gonna grab, and this is 100% a standard, is not a 6XD. I'm actually gonna go down to a 5XD, which runs slightly shallower. It still dives to 15 feet. On 10 or 12 pound test, I can get it probably down to like 12, 13 consistently. But Harris, they kind of like something. My buddy Frank told me they, oh, they like something kind of like that. So I'm gonna grab two of these guys. That's um, a citrus shad. It's kind of got a little bit of everything. There's a little bit of brightness on it. It's white, looks like a shad. And then I'm also gonna grab something that's kind of natural. Let's see what you got. Ooh, that looks fun. Maybe a little too transparent. Oh, maybe one of these guys. I don't even know what I'm gonna grab. But I'm gonna grab, so oh, that's what I'm gonna grab. You can't go wrong with, as I throw things on the floor, um, blue gizzard shad. I'm gonna throw that at Chris and just let him grab it. And then I'm gonna grab one of these guys too. That is the shizzle. And if you don't buy the shizzle, you, you get something wrong with you. But you can see there's a little bit of blue in the back, a little bit of white. It, it's kind of bright, but basically you're mimicking shad. Sometimes there's a uh, brim on these piles and, and on this kind of like hard bottom structure as well. But oftentimes when they get offshore like that, the brim actually look a lot like the shad because they kind of turn to the watercolor. I should get a basket. So Chris, one question I had for you is it's late summer up here. Uh, you know, it's hot, not the best fishing time in Florida, but you can catch a lot of numbers a lot of times this time of year. But what I was curious about is, you know, obviously you're a tackle shop owner. What's like a top bait? Like what? what is your probably top seller right now? You know, right now I'd say probably a Savage Gear Duck is going to be. Yeah, no. It, it, <laughs> but you know what? Maybe this kind of indicates, because we're down the street from what, what lake is that? Hernando? Uh, Hernando Henderson. Of Hernando Person. Henderson. I noticed in those lakes there's a lot of pads. There's a lot of flat pads. So I assume even though you're kind of making a funny about the duck, yeah, yeah. like floating frogs are probably a big deal right now or what's Absolutely. kind of your pick like what, so, what would you say is your top bodies seller? are always going to be good um especially when it gets hot because the fish are going to slow down a little bit and they want to see the bait a little bit longer before they go ahead and strike especially some of the bigger ones that are kind of lethargic so the best ones that i i go for personally um are my, my favorite one is the z-man um you know the leapfrogs okay and what's cool about these is they've got a really really deep keel okay and so it, like you don't even have half you don't even have to know how to work a frog to be able to do like work it so as long as you give it a little bit of slack line it just it walks it, on its own it walks on its own okay you don't have to go trimming tails and go crazy and making it do what you want it to do you just you know fish it 
So. so if these guys are fishing, so that's kind of like a top water pick for this time of year. Yeah. What's your other top seller for guys that are just kind of casting around, maybe not walking a top water? What what's I kind of think I know what it is, but I what is it? So in Florida, it's always going to be a worm. A worm. Okay. I, I actually thought you'd say a Z-Man chatterbait, like a, a jackhammer. So that's my secondary option. But first, if you want to get bit, okay, um, I would always go with some sort of worm. Um, you know. Shut up. You got these? Uh, I don't know. Dude, I've been. This is the yeah the hog front with spunk shit. Oh, Chris. I'm going to have to buy some more stuff. We'll come back to that because I can't get those right now. But all right, so what worms are we talking about here? So I've actually been using these bang sticks. So, okay. You know, June bug in the tannic water, um, but, you know, and then the hula sticks for a smaller bite. Okay. Um, but those have been great. You know, you can Texas rig them. Um, you can put them on a shaky head, a Ned rig. Right. Um, anything like that. Kind of like what I use the fat ace for. Yeah. Like like yeah. your classic. Oh, these a are... stick bait you cannot go wrong with because here's the funny part about late summer. And Chris, you can tell me if you agree. Late summer is sort of, you think you always want something that's super active. And in early summer and sort of late spring when the, the water's still cool and those fish are just getting off the spawn and they want to eat, that's awesome. Move it fast, move it hard. But that late summer, like you're, actually you were just talking about, fish get lethargic, dude. They've seen a ton of lures. A lot of people have been fishing. The water temperature gets into, in this area, it gets into the 90s, dude. Like bath water kind of deal. So they want something a little more slow. And it also seems like they want something with less action. And that stick bait, even though it seems like it might be kind of just like, you know, a straight tail worm, it quivers ever so slightly, but it's not like super obtrusive. Wait, what were you saying real quick? So the other thing is, you know, they're they're very buoyant, so they're going to stand straight up every right. time. And so it makes it to where when you when you dead stick it, if I, the top of it's always trying to find its own area um, or, or make its movement without you really having to move it. So you yeah, can, that's true. You can kind of shake it along and the tail will just go wild the whole time. So you don't like a lot of times you'll have to have like a, a vibe tail or something like that yep. to make that happen. Um, and that that sometimes is a little bit more subtle than a vibe tail as you're if you're dragging it. Yeah, because it's just kind of gradually going. Whoop. Yep. And then always there's a normal vibe tail. Like, uh, Zoom Magnum speedworms are always popular. You yep. Know, you can cat. I you know tell a lot of people that any of the vibe tail worms, the gambler burner worms. And actually, we got um, new colors in the burner worms too. Yep. Yep. We haven't got them yet. They're on, on the way. Oh my gosh! Um, unbelievable. Uh, and literally, if I were to pick, if I had to catch fish in Florida and I had to pick one bait, I'm not gonna lie, it'd be a swimming tail worm. And and that's probably 12 months out of the year you can catch them on it. What changes though is whether you're sw throwing that swimming tail like in a more like shad oriented pattern, in a lighter pattern, or if you're throwing it in darker to like mimic the brim, or somewhere in between. You got to kind of play with your colors a little bit on that, but it is probably one of the most viable baits because you can throw it through grass, you can skip it under docks, you can throw it through like pads, you can buzz it over the top as a top water, you can, I mean, you can drag it on the bottom like you do a worm. And for some reason, Florida fish love that tail. So I heard you guys are famous. He is, not me. I'm so how, how is he famous? How am I famous? How are you famous? Yeah. Former college classic bracket champion, Bassmaster Classic qualifier, Bryan College national champion. The list just goes on. His resume is too long for me to Does read. Does he out. have a name? Does he it have is. an Instagram? Jacob Fouts. Jacob Fouts Fishing. Does he have anything to say? <laughs> <laughs> Well, I don't know my cue there. <laughs> so this is kind of a cool, uh, a cool little meet here. So Jacob is actually out of his. You're out of your region, bro. Go yeah, back I'm home. Go back home. <laughs> we're we're probably both gonna be going in the same direction up the freeway in a little bit. But Jacob, you're you're actually a Chickamauga guy, huh? Yep. Yep. So tell me a little bit about it. Tell me about what you're doing. Uh, I'm guiding on Chickamauga now. Uh, you know, it's one of the best lakes in the country. I'm pretty fortunate to live in the, in the region of the, the world I live in. I'm within two hours of Gunnersville. In two hours of Smith Lake. I mean, you I got come to, over and teach to, me some stuff. Uh, I think you're the one that's got to show me. I don't know about those. No, if they're, if they're looking bass. for a guide trip in that, where can they find you? They can look me up on Instagram or Facebook, Jacob Fouts Fishing. Uh, you can look me up on my website as well, jacobfoutsfishing.com. Uh, just look me up on there and get a hold of me and we'll go have some fun and chicken. Catch some bass. So baby. I heard, and I don't know, this video will probably go up in about a week or so because I can't edit while I'm on the road, but I heard um, you're doing pretty well in the open, so. Yeah, I'm having having a good year. I put myself in a good position to make where, the Elite Series. Where you at? What position? I'm leading leading the points in the Southern Open, so we got one left at Lake Norman here in about a month. So is that the goal to get on the Elite Series? Yeah, that's 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 the lifelong goal. So hopefully we're in a good spot. So hopefully we can get her done. So can you do it? 
Absolutely, I can do it. Hell yeah, I like that, dude. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. I like somebody who can kind of go no bullshit about it. Well, give Jacob a follow. Go check him out, especially if you're looking for a guy trip. Chick is awesome, dude. It's a tough fishery, and frankly, I've gone out there on my own without any help, and I have struggled. So the next time I go out, I'm going to give Jacob a call. But check him out. What's your Instagram again real quick? Jacob Fouts Fishing. And that's Hunter, too. What's up, guys? Oh, my God, Hunter. I know. Unbelievable. Hunter. Let's go look at some lures. Megabus. Are you guys still catching them on Megabus? Really? Tell me more about this situation. Fish eat a jerkbait year-round. Year-round around fact. here. Hey, like schoolies right now or even schoolies just still over just the grass? Schoolies are grass lines. That's the good thing about Florida. We've got eelgrass. We've got Kissimmee grass hard lines. You know, that's that's where the shad is and the, and the shiners all year long is running down those grass lines. So what's your favorite color of the of these guys? Do you mimic more like shad, like something silvery, on, or what do you? It really depends on like. You Harris. Go the, you go to the Harris chain, you know, I always look for a dark back, a light side, more like a shad pattern. Okay. Um, so you're looking for something like, uh, usually the IU patterns are really good. That's what I use so on Gunnersville. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. a little green yeah, back the, the with it. The, because they almost look like a shiner and a shad yeah. at the same yeah. time. It, everything stays the same, even though it's different. Secret lures. Mikey Balls channel. Uh -oh. Secret lures. Bass Wrangler baits. Can I even show these on video? I guess so, yeah, if you want to. It's top secret. Buzz baits? We were just talking about spinner baits. All right, the other thing that we're going to grab, and crankbaits wise for Harris tomorrow, um, is a DT10. And you guys have heard me talk about it a million times. Bodies on crankbaits make all the difference because that water displacement i think is is what's really key and ironically that's why i think this bait rules the the new fritz sides they're they're a flatter deal they actually don't run that great a lot of times but like honestly the fish smash them so any kind of deficit that they have in the way they behave is made up by the fact that you just catch like a five a four and the, the fish eat it another bait like that especially when you're talking about the deeper cranking stuff is is these guys and it's the dt series you guys see me throw a dt6 a lot it, it probably about four or five well about three or four months from now uh for winter fish but it's also an absolute killer usually i'll throw a dt what is a dt16 i think it is and a dt20 uh but we're gonna grab these are dt10s we're gonna grab maybe one of those and then a dt um a dt12 or dt14 but that guy is looking pretty i like that what is that disco shed perfect i think actually frank even told me that's a good color so just like shad we're gonna throw one of those in there because like i said i don't have a bunch of stuff for i consider this more mid-range you know fishing eight to 12 foot eight to 14 foot that's kind of mid-range compared to the stuff that i'm used to experiencing can can we go can chris please show us like the fishing rods please or do you want to go in a cage like that do you want to go in a cage like that okay that's what i thought chris let's see what, what's an all-purpose rod that uh let's let's go look here all right, Chris, what do you got? So we got the Fitzgerald All-Purpose Series. That's got, he's got some newer rods out. Um, so we've got the, the, this is the Buddy 610 Extra Heavy. It's a meat stick for like, if you wanted to, you know, use like hollow bodies and really, really yeah, yeah, yeah. Big, big high drill and make long casts. But it's still short enough where you can it's, fish off the bank because well, that's actually a big deal, yeah. dude. When you're... I don't know if you guys know, because I throw mainly, other than the, like I got that 610 Halo KS2 spinning rod, um, and then I do have another 610 medium, but overall, like all my rods are seven foot or longer. But when you're bank fishing for like getting around corners, tree falls, or kind of getting around tight areas, you, you actually need like a shorter rod. It's more viable. What, what's another pick though that, that you so, recommend? So an all around like length is like, there, there's every length in this series from, you know, 6'6 six, six up to uh, 7'10". So you can find the rods that you're looking for, but if you wanted to find um, in any series of rod, no matter whether it's this series or um, Halo or Ducket or any of those, a seven foot medium heavy is always a great rod to have. Seven three medium heavy is always a great all around to have. Yep. Um, what speed reel would you do? I seven five to one. That's it's what nice I would middle do of the too. road because yep, exactly. you can be fast enough or slow enough. Um, yep. you can do anything with yep. it except maybe cranking, but you can get away with yep. it if you need to. Yeah, frogs and flipping, I'll go with like an eight to one. Yep, exactly. Everything else, you know, is great with a seven five to one. All right, so we're gonna wrap this video up with a question for Chris, and I'm gonna put him on the spot. And he's not gonna like it. If I you guys, if you guys watch my TikTok, actually check out Forty Four Tackle on TikTok. He does a bunch of like funny Chris Kingry, Chris fishing. Kingry fishing. I'm sorry on TikTok. He does some fun stuff in the shop. Like it's. It's fun. I'll just leave it at that. Go check it out. But I put up a video on on TikTok and it got it didn't get like crazy, but it got decent crazy. So 
if somebody came up to you at any of these boat ramps and, and you don't know him, even though Chris knows everybody in town because he owns a tackle shop, so you got to love the guy that owns the tackle shop, right? But he comes up to you and he's like, bro, how'd you do today? And, and Chris is like, as usual, I caught six, six pounders, five, whatever. He caught them, you know? And the guy's like, hey, dude, like, could I get a couple waypoints to go check that out? What would you say? I would never give a waypoint for that for somebody I don't know, but I would definitely point them in the right direction. Answered as a perfect bait truck owner, <laughs> Chris. Thank you, dude. If you, you guys like want, you don't get asked that question every <laughs> day of the week. That's kind of what I figured. So you'd have a good answer, and that was or pretty smooth. Better yet, where is the guy that won the last Wednesday nighter going to catch that? What? Where's the last Wednesday nighter one from? I don't know. I don't know. Oh, should I should a- ask you because well, you won it? No, that's oh. where that's what I get asked every week. Oh, where's the? Because you know, because he saw, or what was it won on? Yeah, that's the other or, trick. Or, or what was the BFL well, one on? Uh, if by. you guys want to come and grab some baits, ask what the Wednesday nighter was one on, whatever, or come just hang out with good people like this guy and actually a couple of guys in the back that we didn't even put in the video. Come on down, Forty Four Tackle. My boy owns it. They got a bunch of stuff, and there's some great fishing around here from Russo to Hernando to the Harris chain. Come say hello. Tell them I sent you. We'll see you. Back back out on the water you or even talk about the online store 44tackle.com 44tackle.com Free shipping, $35 or more check them out online they got a bunch of stuff and especially right now when you can't find a bunch of stuff check out 44 because they probably got it like those spunk sheds that I'm about to go grab but tight lines hit that like some yeah right <laughs> hit that like and subscribe button we'll see you back out on the water talking fish and tight lines guys